This is the American Film Institute Life Achievement Award, the highest honor for a career in film. It has been presented eight times. First in 1973 to the director, John Ford. To James Cagney. Orson Welles. William Wyler. Betty Davis. Henry Fonda. Alfred Hitchcock. And James Stewart. It was a year ago I received this award from the American Film Institute. It was a night I'll always remember. And this year, they're setting the award to music. They're giving it to Fred Astaire. And all of us are looking forward to a wonderful night. The American Film Institute invites you to join the celebration of the career of Fred Astaire, starring David Niven. Mikhail Borishnikov, Sid Sharif, Barry Chase, Bob Foster, Audrey Hepburn, Charlton Heston, Gene Kelly, Hermes Pan, and Eleanor Powell. Angeles, California, the American Film Institute salute to Fred Astaire. I've just got an invitation through the mail. Your presence is requested this evening is formal with formal top hat, white tie, and tail. Nothing now could take the wind out of my sail. Cause I'm invited to step out this evening in top hat, white tie, and tails. Oh, I'm putting on my top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing off my tails. I'm dooting up my shirt front, putting in the shirt studs, polishing my nails. I'm stepping out, my dear, to breathe an atmosphere that simply reeks with class. And I trust that you'll excuse my dust when I step on the gas. Or I'll be there, putting down my top hat, mussing up my white tie, dancing in the tail. Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the ninth annual Life Achievement Award, Mr. Fred Astaire. gentlemen, the co-chairman of the American Film Institute, Mr. Charlton Heston. In 1928, a young brother and sister dancing team made a Hollywood screen test. They didn't get the job, and the test has long since disappeared. But we do have a report on the male half of the team written by a studio executive at uh, Says this, can't act, can't sing, balding, can dance a little. Tonight, 
53 years later, we are gathered to celebrate the American Film Institute's ninth annual Lifetime Achievement Award to honor that fellow who can dance a little, Fred Astaire. The mission of the Film Institute is to elevate the filmmaking arts. Let me make that simpler. We try to act in what we believe, that motion pictures and television can be better. One of the ways we try to do this is to point out the best. That's why our award is given by the vote of our trustees to an individual who's advanced the filmmaking arts in America and whose work has stood the test of time. That's Fred Astaire, for sure. Now, lest there be any questions on Mr. Astaire's qualifications, we have assembled and will present tonight evidence to support our choice. They are scenes from his 46 films and television specials, believe me, they will dazzle you. We've also assembled from the far corners of the world, Fred's colleagues and friends. I'm proud and happy to present one of them to you now. A wonderful man, an Academy Award-winning actor, a best-selling author, Fred's friend and mine. Our host for this evening, Mr. David Niven. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Coming from France for this most special occasion, I somehow got separated from my suitcase and my voice. <laughs> Hollywood Park is not doing very much at the moment, and the, one of the head waiters there came through with this. It's very nice. <laughs> the, the voice has been donated by a 135-year-old parrot. <laughs> so, I just hope you'll Hope you'll be patient and I will be brave. <clears throat> Some Europeans, when they first set foot in this country, have a loathsome habit of showing up on American doorsteps with letters of introduction. Americans have an enchanting habit of not asking too many questions and opening wide the doors of their boundless hospitality. When I first arrived here as an extra in 1934, I had one of those loathsome manuscripts addressed to Fred Astaire. It came from a mutual friend in London, a bookmaker, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and uh, and one, one evening, after a hot game of tennis, I decided to present it. So I crossed the street to the Astaire house. Unfortunately, I forgot to put my shirt on. Fred's wife, opened the door, sniffed like a bird dog, and shut it very quickly indeed. <laughs> then I heard her say, Fred, come quickly. There's a perfectly dreadful half-naked man in the garden. <laughs> From those rather unpromising beginnings came my only claim to fame in the next 46 years in the business, a great friendship with Fred Astaire. Now, Fred, I soon came to realize, is a, a kind, modest, very self-effacing man with an advanced antipathy to flattery and large Hollywood gatherings. <laughs> so, so I can assure you on the very finest authority that at this moment, the poor man is going through absolute hell. <laughs> also, at the risk of blowing a myth, I can assure you that he hates wearing Top hat, white tie, and tails. <laughs> what has brought all of us together tonight is Fred's uh, creativity. He's just come back from New York making another film. And I am very proud to pay my tribute to this man who, for 75 years, has poured out his talent. And this is really going to make him squirm. 
you will see tonight so many things that will remind you that he has also poured out his genius. In a career the like of which we will never see again, Fred Astaire has been a star in every entertainment medium of this century. And this all began when he was six years old. From the very beginning, Fred wore a top hat, white tie, and tails. Young Freddy, a slow developer, was second banana to his older sister, Adele. As he once said, Adele was the dancer of the family. Their mother had taken them from Omaha to New York in 1904, enrolling them in dancing school. There they did Cyrano de Bergerac. And since Adele was taller, she was Cyrano. Fred played Roxanne. <laughs> they grew up on stage, traveling across the United States. It was in London that they had their first big success in a 1923 musical, Stop Flirting. A critic wrote, Fred is an agile youth and apparently boneless, like that nice brand of sardines. <laughs> One Broadway hit followed another. The last time their names were up in lights together was in the bandwagon in 1932. Adele, at the peak of her career, left the stage to marry. Fred, now 34 years old, turned his sights to Hollywood. In 1933, movie audiences had their first glimpse of Fred Astaire in a picture called Dancing Lady. Do you uh, feel like going through that opening number with Mr. Astaire? All right. Ready? Yes, Pat. Show Miss Barlow the routine on that opening number, will you? I'd love to. Good evening, Mr. All right, Barlow. Please, in the All right. Do you know the routine? The I've seen it often enough. I'll try. Oh, that's fine. Oh, Harry, give us the pickup on that gang number, will you please? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. How does that Barlow get to take Warner's place? Didn't you ever hear a poison melody? When Fred saw himself in that scene, he said, gosh, I look exactly like a knife. <laughs> a full-time dedicated warrior, Fred was very concerned about who would be his partner for his first major role at RKO. When he heard the name, he was overjoyed. She was an old friend from Broadway who was fast making a, a name for herself in Hollywood, Ginger Rogers. Fred and Ginger, they would become the most popular romantic team in the history of the movies. It was not only the quality of their dancing which revolutionized the musical, their dances also told a story, a story in which their love scenes were the dances. A classic example is an early scene from Swing Time. Fred, anxious to meet a beautiful instructress in a dance studio, goes for a lesson with the dance the story is launched. Now, if you look carefully, you'll get a glimpse of some of those wonderful character actors who populated the films in the 30s. Victor Moore, Helen Broderick, and Eric Bloch. All right, I'll show you again. Now remember, three steps to the left, three steps to the right. There's the right. And turn. All right. One, two, three. I know, I'm Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, start all over again. Listen, Don't. no one could teach you to dance in a million years. Take my advice and save your money. Miss Carroll, how do you think this school can exist?
When the American Ballet Theatre performed here in January, a newspaper review was headlined, He Brings Down the House. Baryshnikov evokes Chaplin and Astaire. The director of the American Ballet Theatre and one of the world's foremost dancers has flown across the country today to join in tribute to Fred Astaire. Mr. Mikhail Baryshnikov. I've been invited to say something about how dancers feel about Fred Astaire. It's no secret, we hate him. <laughs> he gives us complexes because he's too perfect. His perfection is an absurdity that's hard to face. His sense of invention as a performer inspires unforgettable jealousy. You know, when I first saw Mr. Astaire's movies, it was very discouraging. Well, I thought everybody in America was that good. I felt never gonna dance, kid. <laughs> you know, classical dancers can cope with their legends. Nijinsky did this and that, but it's from books we know about it, from photos that don't move. The problem with Esther is that he's everywhere, <laughs> moving. You know, you give your own performance and receive applause and you think maybe, just maybe, it was successful and you go home feeling good and turn on television to relax and there he is. <laughs> Making you nervous all over again. You remember the remark by Ili Nastasi by Bjorn Borg? He said, we are playing tennis, he's playing something else. <laughs> Say with Fred Astaire, we are dancing, but he is doing something else. <laughs> but all the cliches about Mr. Astaire, his elegance, his imagination, his wit, his virtuosity, they are so very true, very real. And we are, of course, very lucky. His gift, captured in the movies, is one we can all share forever. He was, he is, and he always will be our never-ending legend. Thank you. Fred Astaire and Ginger Roberts. There was a special magic between these two that has not faded with the passage of time. Their musicals saved RKO from bankruptcy in the 30s. But more important, for millions of moviegoers, they made the Great Depression less depressing. Let's look back now at that fine romance of theirs, beginning with their first dance together, the karaoke, and ending with their masterpiece of saying goodbye the immortal never going to dance.
check my dress. Oh, that's nice. You like it? Sure. Thanks. Wait a minute. I think it's wonderful. The skirt's nice. Yeah. The, the sleeves are nice. Oh, it's, it's a cape. The cape is nice. The back is nice. Your hair is nice. And you... Oh. lady you saw dancing cheek to cheek with Fred unfortunately has an engagement in New Orleans this evening. But she sent the following words to Fred. It certainly was fun, Fred. When they put us together, it was a blessed event. Working with you is a memory that I treasure. Love always, Ginger.
Another, another message has been sent to Fred by a former member of our profession who has moved on to, to better things. Nancy and I <laughs> are very proud to extend our congratulations as the American Film Institute honors you with this Life Achievement Award. There is nobody like you. And while they say that every generation has its own style, your style reaches and delights us all. Signed, Ronald Reagan. Take a Cole Porter melody, a ravishing MGN set, and a lady known as the Queen of Tap, mix in Fred Astaire, and the result is a stunning number from Broadway Melody of 1940. <laughs> Miss Eleanor Powell. I see that, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> I'm always afraid I'm going to miss a tap. <laughs> Do you know, during the three weeks of rehearsal on that picture, it was always Mr. Stair and Miss Powell. You would think we were two scientists in a laboratory. We were so serious. It was Fred's first picture after Ginger, and people expected so much from us. Well, there really wasn't much time for laughter. But we both liked to work hard. And our respect for each other was tremendous. Do you know that on Begin the Begin, we rehearsed for two solid weeks on just arm movements so they'd be right together. And I can remember one day when we did a step in counter rhythm. Same rhythm, different steps. And he was so pleased. He rushed over, lifted me in the air, and said, oh, Ellie. And then he put me down and said, I do beg your pardon. 
And I said, look, we can't go on like this. I'm Ellie, you're Fred. We're just two hoofers. And the ice was broken. Of course, the reason you work so hard is to make it look easy. And both of us would always say, could we do it just one more time? We would still be there now. 1940 to 1981. If somebody hadn't been there to say, look, it's just fine, print it. But Mr. Astaire, I still wish we could do it just one more time. winning director of Cabaret and all that jazz, Bob Fosse. Fred Astaire has been my idol my whole life. As a young dancer, I, I tried to imitate him. As a matter of fact, I don't think Fred realizes it, but he is responsible for what I do now. When it slowly dawned upon me that I could never be the kind of incredible dancer he is, I, I think the studios knew it before I did, I said, I better get into another area of this business, so I became a choreographer. What always meant the most to me about Fred was this, uh, and I've tried to use it in my work too, at least learn from it, was this tremendous desire for perfection. I got a peek at him rehearsing at MGM, and even after he had mastered a movement, to me, he seemed to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. You know, think, well, it's gonna become mechanical. I mean, that's what I thought. I was very young in those days. And then you see it on the screen, and it looks like he just made it up. I mean, he just happened to have some firecrackers in his hand. He just happened to be around a piano or a set of drums, and well, I'll fool around a bit. When I was young at MGM, I hadn't met Mr. Astaire, uh, but as I said, he was my idol. And it was the lunch hour, and the, and the streets were abs absolutely clear. And I was coming back to do a little rehearsing for myself, and at the far end of the street, I, I saw him. You could tell from the walk, you know, the walk, the, the walk. <laughs> that walk no one else does like him. And I said, that's him, and, and for some reason, it made me very, very excited. And as he came closer, I could see that his, his mind, he was really concentrating on some, some dance that he was rehearsing because he, his head was down and he suddenly stopped and there was a, it's like a three inch nail lying in the street. And he just sort of flicked his foot like that, just flicked it. And that nail careened off that studio wall. I mean, it was, it was like a rifle shot. And then when, he, then when he got up close to me, he didn't lift his head again and he said, Hiya, Foss. <laughs> well, that was such a moment for me. It didn't make any difference that he uh, didn't say my name right. That, that was not... <laughs> Fred Astaire said hello to me. <laughs> I went back to that studio, Fred. I rehearsed so hard that day, my muscles are still aching from it. I even tried the nails. I'm gonna sit with you now and watch some classic Astaire solos. But before I do, I would like to say from all of us who have in our way tried, and I emphasize tried, to fill your shoes, I'd like to say thank you, Fred.
in two of his musicals, The Bandwagon and Silk Stockings, Fred had a dancing partner whom he once described as beautiful dynamite. When you dance with her, you stay dance with. You'll see what he meant in the Girl Hunt Ballet from the bandwagon. Sid Charisse. In the final scene, the bandwagon, Adolph Green and Betty Compton wrote some wonderful words for me to say to Fred. They worked then, and I think they might be pretty good right now. Fred the whole company got together. We all chipped in, and we bought you nothing. <laughs> so we have nothing to give you but our gratitude, our admiration, and our love. The show's a hit, but we all agreed that no matter what happened to it, it was wonderful working with you. The show's going to run for a long time. And as far as I'm concerned, Fred, it's going to run forever. Fred Astaire had to wait 30 years to do a film version of the stage hit of his Funny Face. It was worth the wait, because by the time, by that time, the enchanting Audrey Hepburn had burst upon the movie scene. There's only one way to describe the experience of seeing Fred and Audrey dance together. It's wonderful. It's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's marvelous, it's marvelous that you should care for me. It's awful nice, it's awful nice, it's paradise, it's paradise, it's what I love to see. It's 
Fred's fair lady has come from Rome to honor him tonight. Miss Audrey Hepburn. first time I met Fred was at rehearsals for Funny Face. I remember he was wearing a yellow shirt, grey flannels, a red scarf knotted around his waist instead of a belt, and the famous feet were clad in soft moccasins and pink socks. <laughs> he was also wearing that irresistible smile. One look at this most debonair and elegant and distinguished of legends, and I could feel myself turn to solid lead while my heart sank into my two left feet. Then suddenly, I felt a hand around my waist and with his inimitable grace and lightness, Fred literally swept me off my feet. I experienced the thrill that all women at some point in their lives have dreamed of, to just once dance with Fred Astaire. Enchanting, fleet-footed, unique, magical Fred. How proud I am to be among those fortunate few. And also to have known the sweetness of this extraordinary man. For this, and for the inestimable joy you've given this world. Dear Fred, thank you. On the first day of shooting on Easter Parade, the producer received a frantic call from the set. And a script called for Judy Garland to kiss Fred, and she was refusing to do so. When the producer arrived, Judy explained, but I can't kiss him, we've never been introduced. <laughs> Tonight, we've introduced to you several of the dancing ladies in Fred's life. Now we shall see more of the gifted performers who have graced the screen with him. Uh-oh. Uh, Mr. Layers. Isn't this our dance? 
Oh, yes. Uh, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, I was just looking for you. <laughs> glad you came along. Thanks, but I guess I'll be going along any minute. Why? <laughs> well, maybe those shock troops at the door won't see me with you out here. <laughs> Naive to ever believe a full of baloney phony like me. Boy, well, I sure must have lost my head. You ain't lost nothing you never had. What about the time you went to Indiana? I was lying, I was down in Alabama. You said you had some business you had to complete. What I was doing, I would be a cat to repeat. family man is surrounded by his family tonight. His wife, Robin. His son, his son, Fred Jr. And his wife, Carol. Fred's daughter, Ava. and her husband, Richard Mackenzie. <laughs> Jerome Kern once was asked where he would place Irving Berlin in American music. Mr. Kern replied, Irving Berlin is American music. Fred and Irving Berlin did six films together, and we're delighted that Mr. Berlin has sent his own salute to Fred 
tonight. It reads, I don't know of anyone who deserves this tribute more than Fred Astaire. As a dancer, he stands alone. And as a singer, no one knows his way around a song any better than Fred. Apart from all this, I love him, Irving Berlin. All the uh, top composers, Cole Porter, Jerome Kern, George and Ari Gershwin, they all felt the same way about Fred. Now let's hear the reason why. A foggy day in London town Had me low and had me down I viewed the morning with the alarm the British Museum had lost its charm. How long, I wonder, could this thing last? But the age of miracles hadn't passed. For suddenly I saw you there. And through foggy London town the sun was shining. Everywhere It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack Searching for a moonbeam in the blue Still I've got to find you It's just like looking for a raindrop in the ocean Searching for a dewdrop in the dew Still, I've got to find you. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. I'm betting everything I've got on you. I'm giving all my love to one baby. Heaven help me if my baby don't come true. I like potato, and I like potato. You like tomato, and I like tomato. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Oh, let's call the whole thing off. But oh, if we call the whole thing off, then we must part. And oh, if we apart, then that might break my heart. When an irresistible force such as you meets an old immovable object like me you can bet as sure as you live something's gotta give something's gotta give something's gotta give i love the looks of you the lure of you I'd love to make a tour of you. The arms, the eyes, the mouth of you. The east, west, north, and the south of you. I can see the sun up high, though we're caught in a storm. I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain pitter patter, but it really doesn't matter if the skies are gray. Long as I can be with you, it's a lovely day. A fine romance with no a fine romance, my friend. This is true love should have the thrills that a healthy kind has. We don't have half the thrills that the march of time has. Must you dance every dance with the same? Fortunate man, 
you have danced with him since the music began. Won't you change partners and dance with me? Heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. And I seem to find the happiness I see When we're out together dancing cheek to cheek Night and day under the height of me There's that old such a hungry yearning burning inside of me And its torment won't be through Tell you let me spend my life making love to you day and night, night and day. One man who has worked with Fred from the very beginning of his career as a dance director, Fred's dance director, and they have been friends and collaborators ever since. One of the finest choreographers in film history, Mr. Hermes Pan. <laughs> Last summer, I went to Italy to work on a film. And uh, when I arrived in Rome, there was a big Fred Astaire festival going on. And there were big posters of Fred plastered all over the city. But what impressed me most was an article in one of the leading magazines there with a picture of Fred on the cover. And the title was America Che Bella Era, which means how beautiful America was or used to be. And it went on to say that he personified what was quality and the beauty of that era. And I think that we owe Fred a debt of gratitude, not only for his artistry, but for the image that he portrays to the world of what this country is good. <laughs> Needless to say, the highlight of my career is having had the wonderful opportunity to have worked with Fred on so many wonderful films. And in the words of a song of Gershwin, uh, uh, the memory of all that, you could never take that away from me. <laughs> Thank you. Another legendary actor and dancer stood here in 1974 to receive the Second Life Achievement Award in accepting it, Fred's good friend, Jimmy Cagney, gave us, gave us his definition of art. Art is life plus, life plus caprice, where the simple sentence becomes a line of Shakespearean poetry, where a number of musical notes strung together become a Beethoven sonata, where a walk done in cadence by a Freddie Astaire becomes an exciting dance. That's art. He's come here to celebrate with Fred, Mr. James Cagney. You know, uh, it just occurred to me that I have a question in answer to a question. I want to know why they waited so long. <laughs> no doubt in my mind, he's the greatest <laughs> I got it here. The greatest dancer I've ever seen in my life. No question about it. And all I can say is, bless him. And I hope he goes on for another hundred years. <laughs> When Fred Astaire made his first venture into television at the age of 59, 
He created a dance special that was immediately recognized as a landmark in the history of the medium. An evening with Fred Astaire won nine Emmy Awards, setting a record for a single program. For his dancing partner that night, that memorable night, Fred chose Barry Chase, a gifted young lady from the chorus of Silk Stockings. She would continue dancing with Fred on TV for the next 10 years. Barry Chase. Poor Fred. I think I know what you're thinking right now. What's she gonna say? <laughs> After all those shows of dance, 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 and never uttering a word. Well, you've done it again, Fred. It's not easy. <laughs> to stand here in front of all these people and try to describe what it's like to dance with Fred Astaire. Oh, uh, Fred, you say you've stopped dancing. I know that's not true. Watch you walk in this room, turn around, pick up a glass. That's the best dancing I expect to see. <laughs> well... Dancing with Fred Astaire was tough. There were times, Fred, you were a monster. And I wish I could start it all over again. Fred Astaire, hello. Oh, right, hello. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't quite place you. Uh, what line of business are you in? Well, I, I dance. Oh, at home for the folks, uh, picnics and that kind of thing. Oh, no, no, we're in public. On street corners. Oh, oh no, on the screen, motion pictures. Oh, oh. Uh, you do go to pictures that have dancing in them, don't you? Why, well, I, I try to see them all. I go oh, as often. Oh, did as you can. see a picture called Cover Girl? Yes. Well, who did all the dancing in that? You're not Rita Hayworth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, Ginger. Uh... <laughs> well, so long, Gene. See you around. I've got a little number, a little to, do number to do here. You have? Well, sure. Here? Sure. Well, say, why don't we just uh, ad lib a little something together then, huh? Uh, whip it up right here on the spot, huh? Uh, throw it away. Like the one we've been rehearsing for two weeks.
What a lovely evening for everyone, but especially for all the dancers in the world. Because we feel a very strong, I mean, I might even say a very unique kind of relationship with Fred Astaire. Because everyone who's ever twinkled a toe or attempted an arabesque, whether amateur or professional or popular dancer or classical or modern, whatever, is pleased and delighted tonight. Because Fred, as Hermes said, we owe you very much. I, uh, in a magazine interview, said once upon a time that anyone who works in musical motion pictures and does not acknowledge a debt to Fred Astaire is either a liar or a fool. But Fred, we do acknowledge that debt, not only for your great artistic accomplishments, but because you and the inimitable Ginger paved the way for so many of us who came later. So. Simply, we, we thank you very much. And uh, we love you, but you know that. As for myself, as for myself, uh, as proud as I am to have known you as a gifted and distinguished colleague, it's been an even greater source of joy to me for, lo, these many years to have you as a true and special friend. God bless. Here to present the Life Achievement Award is a man who, at the age of four, visited Fred Astaire on the set of Swing Time. No, he was not taking notes for tonight's tribute. His father was directing the film. From his youthful endeavors, he went on to become the founder and presently the co-chairman of the American Film Institute, Mr. George Stevens, Jr. Believe it or not, we are faced with a division of opinion about Fred Astaire. We say he is a genius. He says, I'm just an old so-and-so from Omaha. <laughs> but tonight, the evidence has been presented on these two screens. Sitting at that horseshoe table there is the greatest musical performer in the history of motion pictures. premier American dancer of the 20th century. The trustees invited Fred Astaire to receive this award for lifetime achievement because of his incomparable contributions to the development of the film and television arts, to our country, for which he has put our best foot forward for so many years, and to moviegoers the world over, for whom he has created countless hours of exhilaration, emotion, and joy. The American Film Institute is committed to preserving forever the films of Fred Astaire for future generations. So just as I now watch my children delight and laugh at his films made so many years before they were born, that someday their children will share the feelings we felt tonight and watch the world of grace that this man created. Edward R. Murrow, trying to pin Fred down on the secret and the, of the timelessness of his work, asked him to define his art. And Fred said, what I tried to do was just knock him in the aisles every chance I got. <laughs> and we will invite him forward tonight with one final demonstration of his ability to knock us in the aisles. And in doing so, remember the words of the poet John Milton, words that could have been written for Fred Astaire. Grace was in all his steps, 
heaven in his eye and in every gesture, dignity and love. <laughs> Mr. Astaire. Now comes the hard part. <laughs> oh. I really, I really have had such a marvelous time. I don't know how to start or how to finish, and I haven't had one drink. <laughs> uh, let me, let me just get to it this way. This is a wonderful way to celebrate 75th uh, or 76th year in show business, as was mentioned before. I, 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 as, as some people may know, my sister and I had a vaudeville act for years. And I have to say that, that uh, my sister Adele was th most, mostly responsible for my being in show business. She was the whole show. She really was. All the vaudeville acts we had and the musical comedies we did together, Adele was the one uh, that was the shining light. And I was just there pushing away. And then all of a sudden she got married. I went on by myself and I did all that. I didn't, I re didn't realize I did all that stuff. <laughs> it was really Christmas. Oh. I saw things, things up there that, that I don't remember doing. You know, I mean, <laughs> And then I, I, I'm glad to say I liked what I saw. I did. I, I said, my gosh, I didn't know that was that good. It really looked good to me. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think that when you, when you do a uh, movie, I'm sure Gene would agree with me, you go back to look at it. I mean, the dance stuff, you. you you go back and look at it, on the, and you're a little disappointed in what you see, because a lot of times after you beat the floor to a pulp, uh, you, you, you think that you've done so much, and you, when you finally see it on the screen, for the first time, it looks as if you're standing still. Just, just like that. He, <laughs> just do something. Don't just stick up there. Now, I want to thank an awful lot of people, the people that took all the trouble to come here tonight and from foreign countries and so forth. And, uh, it's very difficult to go all through the names, and since they've all been, been talking and mentioned enough, I, I, I just, I, I, could, I could cry, I really could, but I, I mean, I, I'm, if I had a, 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 you know, a little thing that I could squirt in my eye, I could, I could cry. <laughs> but, <laughs> I had a letter from, from Ginger saying that she, you know, it was sort of what you heard before. And uh, it was very cute. It was about that long. And I, I couldn't read half of it. It was her handwriting. It was very fancy. <laughs> but I'm going to go home and study it when I get back home. <laughs> Bless her heart. She's a terrific gal. And she works like crazy all the time. She does. And I love all the be beautiful gals that I've danced with. They're just. It, well, it's just hard to explain it. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. They're, they're, they're all so good, so 
darn good. Now, I'm going to say good night, and I've, I've forgotten something. It's because I really did forget, or have forgotten. There's a lot more to say, and I think it's getting late. And, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to death. I can't explain it any, any more than that. I really can't. Thank you. gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, to Fred's intense delight, that wraps it up. Freddie, I know it's been absolute hell for you, but it's been heaven for us. On behalf of the American Film Institute, good night. Good night.